Oh yeah. You know what kind of episode it is. I'm guessing you wouldn't ever get a martini this big in a restaurant. It's a lot of ice. It's a lot of melted ice. That's what I'm saying. Cheers. Ooh, that's right. Look, you guys. I'm fancy. Look at that. It's a, it's, it's, I don't know. Are those bamboo or something? You OGs know I always use toothpicks. But my uncle, who I haven't seen, uh, I, I don't know, Uncle Tim, what is it? A couple years maybe. He lives in Florida and he came up and he watches the podcast and bought me these. He's like, Chevis, you're, you're way too high class to be using toothpicks. Actually, he didn't say that. I can't remember what he said. It wasn't high class because I am far from high class in anything. I actually come to think of it, I think it was more like him going, stop using toothpicks. Here, I got you these. <laughs> I'm also, this is a brewery. It's Bury Me Brewing. And he also got me these glasses because, you know, I work at a funeral home, bury me, haha. -ha. But I think they're, it's someplace in Florida. Has anyone been there? Tell me about it. You like it? Let's get started. Grab your drink. I have been waiting for that drink all day long. Hi guys, how are you? I'm really excited to be here today. I've been looking forward to this like all day. I am Chevy Rell. This is the Chevy Rell Stuff Podcast. We talk mostly about fiber happenings, not fiber-like diet, fiber-like wool. And this is the Stuff Room, hence Chevy Rell Stuff Podcast. I would like to start out by saying from now on, and this is thanks to Leslie from Not Quite Enough Yarn, the Not Quite Enough Yarn podcast. If you guys don't watch it, you should. Leslie, she's across the pond. She mentioned on her last episode, which y'all know I am perpetually behind on my YouTube queue. So I think she's had an episode or two since this. She mentioned on the last episode that I have watched that she will now be doing captions up top instead of down below. Because for those of you who watch closed caption, which I know that there's at least one of you, one of you have commented that I'm so expressive that you can read my lips very well. <laughs> But I did turn on closed caption. YouTube has like a thing within the settings that you can turn on closed caption. I don't know how well it works. I don't know if it does curse words or not. That's interesting. Shit. Did it do it? I don't know. I'm going to watch it back because now I want to know. Anyway, she said that she was going to start doing captions up top so that for those of you who are watching closed captions, it's not like words on top of words, right? How brilliant is that? Why did I not think about that before she said it? That's why we all do what we do, right? You never know who's listening or who's saying whatever that like clicks. So I'm going to try it, which watching this, I it's probably going to be like across my head. Maybe I should scoot back. I don't know, whatever. I kind of like being all up in your grill. What you think? So we'll see how it goes. For those of you that that's helpful for, you let me know if it works. Okay, I am going to try and put a timestamp in here. Um, I am going to go on a little, I say little, I don't know how little, uh, rant on adulting and the bullshit that I've been dealing with for the last week. For those of you who don't want to hear my adulting saga, because let's face it, like, yes, I can adult. I'm very capable of doing so, but I don't really like to. I'm Pisces. My head's in the clouds. I would very much rather be in La La Land or like the labyrinth with Jareth. Hey. For all you labyrinth lovers, you get this shirt. My main reason for bitching about this is 
I had no idea it was a thing. Some of you may know it's a thing. I've had some dental issues lately. My teeth are my thing. You know how we all have our thing? Like some people are skinny and some people are tan and some people can grow their fingernails, none of which I am. My teeth is my thing. I've never had braces. These are my teeth. I love my teeth. I have fillings. You're gonna hear way more about my dental health today than you care to know. So if you don't, like go ahead and fast forward. I, I won't be mad. But for those of you who have never had dental issues, I want you to know what could possibly happen to you. And for those of you who have, you're gonna be nodding your head like, mm-hmm, I know. I have had fillings, but I've had one root canal. And it's weird because the tooth I had a root canal in, I actually had problems with it when it was a baby tooth. And the dentist said, it's a baby tooth, just let it fall out. Well, my teeth are so close together that the one that I had a root canal on, it was because of that. Like, they, it was so close together, like, I, I don't know. Something got in there, it didn't flow. I don't know. Whatever it was, I had to have a root canal, okay? Okay. We're talking like eight years ago. Maybe longer, not sure. But it never really, I mean, it healed, but it talked to me every now and again, if that makes any sense, you know? Like, I'd say three, four, five times a year, it'd be tender. Sometimes it would keep me up at night, like it would throb. And I'd say something to my dentist. At first, my dentist was like, it's, it's just, you know, like let the root canal settle, it's new, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, fine. So then later, I'd say like the same thing. It's, I, and I wasn't really, uh, I wasn't really concerned about it because it was so random. I mean, I'm talking like three to five times a year for like one day. It would just talk to me. And it wasn't anything like debilitating. It was just, I could feel it, you know? Like, and then at night when I was laying in bed at night, it would throb. Like, that's how I knew. It wasn't painful as much as it was talking to me. I'd mention it and he, you know, took x-rays. Well, there was a little black, like dark spot, like up in my gum. And he's like, I really don't like the way that looks. I'm going to email a colleague, whatever, which it was an endodontist at the time. I had no idea what that even meant. I'd never hear anything. Like I leave my appointment, you know, I go in twice a year for my cleanings because my teeth are like, la, like, right? But then the next time I'd go in, he'd ask me if I was having any issues. And I'm like, well, since the last time you saw me, like that one time, you know, and he'd be like, yeah, that is so weird. I'm gonna email, you know, somebody and ask a second opinion. Well, I never heard anything. And this has been over the course of many years at this point, right? He got a new dentist in his office and she's new, so she's probably a little more prone to worry about things that maybe a vet trend wouldn't, I don't know. So instead of emailing the endodontist, she's like, I don't like that. And now it's grown, now the black spot's bigger. It's not black, it's like a dark spot in the x-ray, which of course it's black because it's black and white x-ray, right? So I don't want you to think I have like some black nastiness in my gum. I don't know what it is. She refers me to this endodontist. I go to the endodontist. He does all this stuff that is terrible. Like he puts this like cold stuff on my teeth that you guys beware. If they ever want you to do that, it hurts like a bitch. And I have a high pain tolerance. It is not pleasant. He looked at the x-ray. He did a bunch of stuff. All my teeth are alive and well, fine. But this is what I find out. That dark area is some sort of infection. Hard to tell what it is. He thinks that it could be a cyst. His recommendation, this still, last week, I couldn't talk about this. I mean, you guys, when I left his office, I sat in their parking lot and ugly cried for like 20 minutes. Like a little kid, bald, like, I'll admit it to you. I threw a fit in my car. I wanted to barf. It was terrible. The way to fix it is an oral surgeon has to go in and cut that infection out of my gum. 
in doing so, it will cut off blood supply to this tooth, this tooth, this tooth, and this root canal. All these teeth, okay? So, in order to cut the infection out, he would kill those teeth and they would die and fall out of my head. Therefore, the endodontist said that he would have to do three root canals for me to keep those teeth, plus a resurfacing or something, I forget. So he'd have to do something to that root canal. So he'd do all of those things first, then an endodontist could go in, clean that infection out, and since those roots are dead, I don't really understand how root canals work, because he said that I could keep my teeth and they wouldn't be caps. Because I love my teeth. I want my teeth to be alive, you know? Like, I don't want, because this is a cap, this root canal. But he said I wouldn't need to cap those, which I don't understand how that's possible. <sighs> I, I mean, I, I'm looking at like 10 grand. Let me just take a drink. Because to say that out loud makes me ill. I've, I've done some research. I do have dental insurance. I pay for dental insurance, which I never use. So I guess for those of you who don't pay for dental insurance because you don't use it, like I'm glad I pay for it. The endodontist that my dentist sent me to is out of network. So I wanna go to an endodontist that's in network and get a second opinion. Best case scenario, if I can get either my dentist to do the root canals or find an endodontist in network to do my root canals, plus an oral surgeon that's covered in my dental insurance, I think I can get it down to five. I hope I can get it down to five. I have a call in to my dentist. He's supposed to call me back because I called him last week and you know, he'd already left for the day on Friday, took a half day, whatever. That's where I'm at. I had a super, super bad week because of that. And I'm sorry you had to hear it, but I wanted you to know that that is possible because I learn from other podcasters. I would have had, and not just knitting stuff, Avs, I had no idea that that was a thing at all. I, I didn't know. This is all news to me. My teeth are perfectly healthy. I'm so mad. My teeth are still perfectly healthy. It's just like up in my gum. And why is it there? And you know what? This is what pisses me off the most. I had no problems until I got that root canal. Mm -mm. So, adult saga. Hashtag adulting sucks sometimes. That's what I'm rolling with. Let's get into the FOs, shall we? And talk about something a little lighter than stupid adulting. The first FOs I'm going to show you is my little soldering projects. Thank you for you guys who are like showing me love on that. It has been so much fun. A lot of you have asked if I'm going to sell any of the pieces or do commissions or anything like that. In light of my dental situation, I am going to sell some things. Not sure when, not sure how much, I'm, I'm, this is all a new venture. Right now, I'm just really having fun making the things. I still feel like I'm learning. I'm playing around with solder. I'm honing the craft. I'm having gobs of fun. Oh my God, I love it so, so much. I made this, the necklace that I'm wearing. I don't know if you can see it. That's amethyst. Here's a citrine. I don't know if that's focusing or not. The solder that I am playing with now has lead in it, like you would use for uh, stained glass. They do not recommend, and this is why I'm weird about selling these pieces. I, I am, I'm gonna sell them, but I'm not going to sell them as jewelry. I am wearing this because it is not, like I'm not licking it, I'm not putting it in my mouth, I'm not rubbing it and putting my fingers in my mouth, I'm not rubbing it on my food and eating my food. Lead is fine if you have a brain in your head. If you don't, then I would not wear it on your person. These things, like for instance, I don't know for those of you who, I should have gotten a, let me get 
a knitting needle so that I can show you these better. If y'all are into soldering, I'm sorry, but I do a bunch of stuff. I don't just do knitting. Like I like all the things. I need to learn how to do all the things. I want to know the answers. You guys know I love learning and this is no different. Okay, so I made progress keepers. These are quartz. I, I'm scared to get them too close because it doesn't uh, focus. Well, my pale hand doesn't help. This is like a really cool stone. I don't know what it is. And then these are all quartz. I like the earring clasps for progress keepers over the lobster claws just because a lot of times I'll forget to like put one in and I'm trying to do it one handed and I just find that these work easier for me. So that's what I got to make them. They would be on your knitting. Again, you would not be like licking them. So they have lead in them. You could use these as window catchers. I, window catchers. You could hang these. I made my brother a keychain with coal on it. I mean, anything, you could hang these anywhere. Oops. So there's some of them. This, you guys, this is that F and Susu. So this is plucky. I know that. This is, I don't know. I want to say it's like a, it's a, I don't know. You don't care. It's orange yarn. It's a single. I'm just playing around right now. Promise. I have a moon tarot card. The moon, which is Pisces tarot card, which is why I made that. And then I made, this is a picture that I took of the last full moon, not the last full moon, our last blue moon, it was a big deal. And I made, this thing is the guts of a clothespin. Isn't it cool? I still have a ton of ideas, yo, and I'm having so much fun. When I put these up for sale, if anyone buys them, that money is gonna go toward my teeth because I don't have five grand to spend on my teeth. I mean, I don't know too many people who do. However, the chick in front of me at the end of Honest, her bill was like $1,100 and she was just like, here you go. Like it was no big whoop. I'm like, damn, I wish I could just like whip out my credit card for $1,000 and act like it was no big deal. Okay. Now I am responsible. I have a savings but it's going for like the front of our house. Ugh. Anyway, you guys don't care about my financial woes. The main point of that is, if any of y'all want that, when I put it up and you happen to snag one, thank you, cause you're helping me with my teeth. In a perfect world, I would use that money to buy yarn, right, right? Uh? Mm. Oh my God. I wish I could share the happiness that is going on in my mouth right now. My next FO is for the book mail that Chevy Rao stuff is doing right now. For those of you who are either already participating in the book make along, or for those of you who are making something out of a book, magazine, some sort of printed material that qualifies to enter. And there is a chatter thread and an FO thread on the Ravelry group page, Chevy Rao's stuff, Ravelry group thing. It'll be linked below. I try to link all the things, even stuff that I think that you probably won't look at. I do try and link like weirdo stuff that I talk about. But if I don't link something, always ask me, but it's in the group. Go on and join over there. It's super fun. There are other dog sweaters. I see other fur babies on that thread. I made a sweater out of this book, Dogs in Knits, by Judith Schwartz. I made a sweater for Ditto, and I finished it. It's called the Icelandic Beauty. There it is, right there. Here is Ditto's sweater. The pattern called to tack down the turtleneck. I didn't want to. You know why? Because I do what I want. That's why. Except I don't want to spend money at the dentist, and I have to do that because adulting sucks and I don't wanna walk around with no teeth in my mouth. Oh, I forgot to say that. I was like, what happens if I don't do anything? 
And he was like, well, the uh, infection will eventually eat away your bone and your teeth will die and fall out on their own. Awesome. Anyway, here's Ditto's sweater. Look at it. It has not been washed or blocked because that's the way I roll. In a perfect world, there may or may not be footage because you all know that Ditto is a whirling dervish. So if there is, enjoy. Of course. We have to show everybody how pretty you look in your sweater. Even though it's 100 degrees outside and you just got done running all over the backyard. I know. Because you're so handsome. Oh, it's so cute. Hey, 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 hey. I didn't say you could have that yet. Sit. Good boy. Come look at me. Sit. Good boy. Good boy. Here. Do you want to tell everybody that you love your sweaters? Here. Where are you going? If nothing happened right there, it's because it didn't go well. My next FO is the Getting Warmer Cal, Cal, Cowl by Espas Tricot. Them ladies up there in Canada. This is what it looks like, right? Do you see it? What the fuck? Tell me where I failed, people. See how that's like super tight? Okay. I followed the pattern. All of my um, numbers came out fine. Mine does not look like that. I have the same numbers that this does. Plus, I used the needle that the needle size it called for. Let me look. A US 10. Look at this. And all my numbers came out right. Everything came out perfect. What? What happened? This is Mama Jean's birthday present. She wanted a scarf originally to go out and do chores. I said, how about a cowl? Because I would rather poke myself in the eye a bunch of times than a scarf, right? I take it back. I'd rather poke myself in the eye a bunch of times knitting this. It took forever. Forever. For those of you who uh, are 90s kids and watch The Sandlot, like me. While it's a fail as far as it is not supposed to look like this. I think Mama Jean will like it because she wanted a scarf, right? Like she's going to have it in a coat so she could do it. Oh, I still have a stitch marker on it. I don't remember where it was the last, the last time you saw it, it was like somewhere in, in here. I'm real professional like that. If you want a professional podcast, the OGs know you'll go elsewhere. This is more train wreck hot mess. We all have our thing, right? Okay, this though, I think Mama Jean will put like her coat over it, right? And look, she could even do this. So when she goes outside, I mean, so it's like kind of a fail, but kind of not. Ah, uh, right? Now, I have no idea what I did, so I could not replicate that. Well, yes, I could replicate it again. I could just follow the damn pattern because, right? Look at this, look. See this picture right here? Look at mine. Mine does not look like that. Yet all the numbers worked out. So I have no idea what I did. This yarn is, I wanna say Threads & Co. That's not right. Loops and thread. Loops and threads, loops and thread. Michael's acrylic, it's super soft, it's super squishy. Even though it did not turn out like this, I still like it. I think she's gonna love it. I don't know. Mama Jean, do you like it? She watches sometimes. You might already have it. I don't know. That's that FO and it's done. It's off the needles. I purchased yarn to make myself one of these as well. Yeah, no, I'm not doing it again. I was in a huge knitting slump. I'm not even lying. So we got new neighbors and he's coming over here and he's talking to us. 
he's staring at me through the window and here I'm like, <laughs> anyway, um, totally lost track of what I was saying. You know how weird it is when you get new neighbors? Like we live in like this super little addition, right? We live in an addition out in the middle of the country and there's like 50 houses in it, maybe 75. And we live on a cul-de-sac. Well, our neighbors moved. And you know that's weird when that happens because, well, I don't know, some of you might not know. If you live in a cul-de-sac, your houses are like, like the cul-de-sac people are kind of like, not tight, we're not tight, but we know each other because we live in the cul-de-sac, right? So you never want like a dickhead neighbor to move in. And I grew up in the country. You guys, I grew up on like 26 acres or 27, 20 some acres of land. So when I moved to the city, I didn't like that. I don't, I don't, I don't like people all up in my space. And then I know city people, sorry, the lighting is changing. Then I know city people who move out to the country and they're scared because they're, they feel like they're stranded in the country. Mama Jean, she grew up in the city. And then when she was kind of like, eh, being out in the country, you're like out there all alone. I'm like, no, I, I like being alone. People don't mess with people who live in the country. You know why? Because we have dogs and shotguns. In the city, like your next door neighbor could rob you and then just go home and you wouldn't know. Like it could have been anybody. Not that that would happen here at all. Point being, your neighbors are real close so you hope they're cool, which I'm sure this dude is. Dan's out there talking to him now. I, this is why you guys like martini episodes, isn't it? <laughs> because I go off on rants. Let's get back to the knitting. I'm sure Mama Jean will love that cowl. I'm not knitting another one because I feel like I was in a funk. I was in a knitting funk. I was knitting Ditto's sweater out of Red Heart. While I love Ditto and while I was happy to knit it out of a book and I, I'm glad Ditto, Ditto. While I'm glad Ditto has a sweater, I just wasn't in love with the knit. Then the Getting Warmer, which I thought would be similar to like a vanilla sock, because I like to have a vanilla sock. I like to have something that I can just pick up and knit and it be mindless. The needles were so large, it wasn't, you know, a 10 is, is a fat needle when you're used to knitting on like twos or zeros or whatever. It's not as fluid of a movement for me to knit on that large of a needle. So I couldn't wait for Ditto's sweater to be done. I couldn't wait for that to be done. And then I knit, the Lutz monster for my Uncle Tim. Cheers, Uncle Tim. If you don't want to see this, okay, rewind. Remember on the last episode when I was like, I'm totally going to finish this monster because my Uncle Tim's coming into town and I want to give it to him before he goes back and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it didn't happen. Not, not even a little bit. Nope. Baby. Is the neighbor cool? Yeah. So that was a lot of minutes that you guys won't see because I'll cut it out. But Dan came in and said that our neighbor is pretty cool. His name's Bronson. Oh, what a cool name. Isn't that a cool name, Bronson? Anyway, Uncle Tim, if you do not want to see this, close your eyes. I did not get it done the last time, but I did get him done this time. His name is Lutz. Okay, this is the pattern. Sorry, hold on. There we go. Sorry lighting you know it's not not my forte and i will never pretend that it is however i don't like the <sighs> okay lutz is by paula schramm my blinds my blinds my lighting is perpetually effed let me see if i can try and fix it a little bit is that a little better it might be dark it might be dark now i don't know because it's still very bright to me, but I don't know. Okay, here's Lutz. Isn't he cute? Here's Uncle Tim's Lutz. <laughs> Isn't he cute? Look at his little ears and his little tongue. Okay, so the zipper works. How this is constructed. Well, I it's a paid for pattern, but come on now. like. I'm not telling you how to make 
the monster. What is the problem? What did I do? I'm zipping the fabric up into it. How you make his mouth is you sew like a little pocket. So the zipper is functional and you can tuck his tongue in. Like maybe you don't want his tongue hanging out that much. Maybe you just want it hanging out a little bit. Maybe you want it hanging up like that. You can do whatever. The zipper's functional. And then look what I did. I put my tag on the end of his tongue. My tag is on the monster, but you can tuck it in so that you don't see it. That was the point. Isn't he cute? There's the back of him. This was just scraps. Now, you can kind of tell these are fingering weight and this is sport weight. And you, it's in the pattern to make these little like ear impression things. And then his little arms look like socks. <laughs> I will be mailing that now to my Uncle Tim. He finally gets his monster because it's been forever since I told him that I'd make it for him. So he was my other FO. Now, those three things, I'm just really glad to have off the needles. Like I felt like I needed to clear my plate before I felt comfortable doing some new stuff. So you know what that means. Y'all remember Mad Fuzzy, right? My girl Marta up in Maine. Maine made yarn that is grown, shorn, dyed, spun, spun, dyed, dyed, spun, spun, dyed. Yeah, spun, dyed. That's right. Sister Golden Hair Surprise colorway in her pretty tough on, not in, on her pretty tough base, which is 80% East Frisian wool. Frisian? 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 Wool, 20% Starfire Nylon. This is 380 yards. I have it in my socks. I knit my socks two at a time. I started the Hermione socks. I don't know if y'all remember, but they were ginormous because I normally knit 64 stitches. I restarted these 60 stitches, and this is what I have so far. I'm only doing one at a time because I started on, what are those called? My flexi flips, which are the three needles. Uh, hold on, let me get them in case you guys don't know what they are. These are flexi flips. They come in this tube. They look like that. So I'm on ones. Now, how flexi flips work is you have three of these guys. So it's sort of like a cross between knitting in the round, or knitting in the round. It's all knitting in the round. What the hell am I talking about? It's a cross between double points and magic loop, a little bit. I have decided I'm not really a fan. I thought these were gonna be awesome. I am a circular, I'm a magic looper. Why do I keep saying circular? Now, they're kind of fun to do this with. I am normally, most often, toe up, two at a time, magic loop sock knitter. I love notions. I've always loved notions. So when I saw these, they looked amazing. Much like when I saw nine inch circulars, which I basically despise because they make me feel like I knit with eagle claws. I'm pretty sure these are the same. The first pair I knit with, I was like, ah, they're all right. Like I can do that, right? Except then you get to the heel and you have to switch anyway. You have to like add, the heel's all wonky. I, I'm just not a fan. So speaking of selling shit, I might be selling these because while I like things in my stash, the Addy Flexi Flips are, are, are not enjoyable to me. So if they are you, maybe I'll, I'll, uh, I'll sell them to you. $5,000. <laughs> Pay for my mouth. No. Um, anyway, I restarted these on the Addy Flexi Flips. 
decided I did, they were not enjoyable, so I went back to my magic loop, but I am doing one at a time on this. This is a toe up. I did Laura Neal's rounded toe from the Sock Architecture book. This is the Hermione's Everyday Sock Pattern. Because of the colorway, it's not really showing up on screen, but on, in, on, on person, in person, you can see the stitch texture way better. I'm liking them. They will be a looser sock. They're not going to be tight. I will probably wear, even at 60, I am normally a 64. Even at 60, these are not going to be a tight fitting sock for me. I did not measure the stitch per inch. Hold on. Let me, well, let me do that right quick. It looks like I'm getting eight stitches per inch, which I thought was what I get normally. Is that right? That seems weird. Hold on, I have a pair of Dan socks right here. I'm gonna check. These are a pair of Dan socks I knit many moons ago and I've washed umpteen times. Where is it? And I found while I was doing laundry, like while after I washed them, where is it? I thought I marked it. I didn't mark it. There's a dropped stitch in here and he's been wearing them. And they, I think it's somewhere in the cuff. But let me count these because, dude, I thought I had eight, eight stitches to an inch. I thought that was my norm. Oh, I guess I'm nine. These are nine stitches to an inch. Mad Fuzzy has a little different because I think it's mill spawn. I don't know. I don't know why they're so different, but they are. It took me a while to get gauge on these. They are non super wash, so maybe that has something to do with it. I think that all my other socks are super wash. I'm super excited about them. We'll see once uh, I get to the heel how the fit is. They're my non thinking knit. For those of you who have knit the Hermione's Everyday Sock, I think a lot of people have knit them. It's one of those patterns that is sort of like a vanilla, but just a little something something. So like if you don't wanna do a vanilla and you want just a little something, but you still don't have to pay attention, it's not like a full blown pattern sock, this is a good, good pattern. That's my first whip. I put a lot of ice in this. This, I am not this big of an alcoholic. Like that is mostly water at this point. It's like vodka flavored water with my fancy knotted, I was gonna say toothpick, but it's not a toothpick, I know. That's so stinking good. A skewer, is that what it is? An olive skewer. If I can find the picture, I'll insert it here. It's the picture that just popped into my head. If I can't find it, I'll show you another day. But I think I know where it is. I don't know why I thought of it, but it just popped in my head. My next whip is my Moon Moth Pin Keep, which is cross stitch. I got some, some stitch and done. Okay, so this is, for those of you who are not cross stitchers, it holds and then you can put your leg, or you can put this like under your leg while you're stitching, right? And I do this on the couch. I get a massage every month, which I think I might have to stop doing because of my teeth. But it really is like a health benefit to me because I am very, I'm a very tense person. Like I, I need it. So his name is Rocky. He's been my massage guy forever. He comes to the house. This was sitting on a chair over here and he asked if a pirate was missing his peg leg. <laughs> the last time you saw this, I think there was some of this here. So I got all the rest of the black done and then some of this green. You can't tell that's green but that's green. It's the same color as this. So I'm just rocking and rolling on that. All I have left, you guys. Okay, so these little holes right here, I, uh, yeah, these little holes are like a rust color. 
all of the rest of the moth is green and then the rest is this white fingers and then I'm done because then I have some other cross stitch and stuff I want to start. Plus now that I've, oh, let me, let me just say this, mm, sorry. Oh, 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 I have so many things I want to say. This, see this right here? I get questions on this when I post it on Instagram. This is called a needle minder. It's a magnet. It's a magnet underneath. Hey, look at the back of my, this is like when knitters show the back of their color work. Eh? Okay, so this is a magnet and it, hence needle minder. It's minding your needle when you're not working on it, right? Oh, that, that didn't work out well. Mm. How much vodka did I say I had? One of you, I apologize that I don't remember off the top of my head who. I get a lot of comments and I do reply and read all of them, but there's like a bunch of you and only one of me and sometimes I forget and I super, super apologize. But one of you suggested making these in needle minders. So I might do that too for all you cross stitches out there. I have, I have ideas, I have ideas. Anywho, back to this. This part was lots of counting. Now I'm just in filling. Like now this is, this is like at this point, it's fill in the blank. This is vanilla sock status of cross stitch. That's what that is right there. My next whip is a new cast on and this is what has gotten my knitting mojo back. My knitting mojo is back y'all. So many things. First off, I'm using my ball sack, my new ball sack with my owl on it from Winterberry's Yarn. Showed this on the last podcast. I am knitting the Nordiska, but I'm not doing the color work. I wanted a cropped sweater. I picked out my yarn. I searched all the patterns on Ravelry. I wanted this shape. And I already owned it. There were other sweaters that were plain, but I I wanted I wanted this one. I just didn't have the yarn to do the color work, and I was like, well, screw it. I'll I'll just do it all one color, and then I'll re knit it again with the color work. And if there's anything that I don't like from just doing it with the one yarn on the color work one, I can change it, and I already know what I'm gonna change. Well, let me show you. So first, I swatched. Y'all might not know, I yes, you heard that correctly, I swatched. I always swatch for my sweaters. My gauge is so far off, and I've probably said this before, but my gauge is so far off most of the time because I'm such a tight knitter that I, I usually have to go up one or two needle sizes. However, I found recently I haven't been, a, for a lot of things, I've been able to keep whatever the needle size is that the pattern designer recommends. So this pattern, the Nordiska, I'm aware this is sort of like old news. I feel like everyone has already knit this and now they're on to another color work sweater that starts with an S and I want to say Sedona and that's not right. There's some Sonata, Sonata, y'all. You're yelling it at the screen. I know you are. I'm late, late to the game on this one. However, I looked at the notes, the helpful, that's the thing about after someone has knit a pattern a whole bunch of times, you can go in and look at the notes on Ravelry. Not that I do that every time. You guys know that I've been burned a whole bunch. Like sometimes I'll knit the pattern and then I'll go look at the notes and it's like, gee, wish I would have read that before I knit it. For this one, I did look at it. Apparently, Caitlin Hunter is notoriously a loose knitter. And a lot of people have to go up one, if not two needle sizes to make gauge on her patterns. Well, I didn't read that until after I did my gauge swatch on the fours. This is on four. The gauge for this sweater is 20 stitches in four inches on size fours. I can't remember exactly, but I think I was at like 26, 28, 26, 26, I think. 
I knit another gauge swatch. How's the best way to show you guys this? I knit another gauge swatch at six, which is two needle sizes bigger. I don't know if you, that doesn't look like anything to me. Now in person, come on. In person, I can totally tell. Just with it, oh, hold on, let me try it this way. Just with them laying next to each other on the table drying, I could see it. You can't see jack shit on screen. Those look identical to me. The six, which is this one, I still got like 21 stitches per inch. This sweater calls for 10 to 12 inches positive ease. This yarn, which is terrible on screen, you guys, oh, there's a little bit. It's a beautiful turquoise. There's a beautiful turquoise color in there. This yarn is amazing. It is Mineville Wool Project. Sorry, I'm jumping all over. Happy martini episode. This is Mineville Wool Project. This is their super sock, 393 yards, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon in the Constellation colorway. I purchased this yarn from Simply Socks Yarn Company. If y'all don't know what that is, you should go check out her website because, hello. She has like 17 tons of yarn in her store, just saying. This is what it looks like caked. Oh, you can see the turquoise better in there. I've had this yarn for a while. Where was I going with that? Thank you, Martini. I'm blaming you for losing track of what I was talking about. <laughs> okay, so I went up to sixes. I guess that was the main thing. Oh, I remember, I remember, I remember. 10 to 12 inches, positive ease. As you know, on my Susu, I usually knit like a third, like I'm like a 38, right? So I that's usually what I knit, which is, I feel like a large. Hmm? A large in this is 52. Stand by. Yes, so you want 10 to 12 inches positive ease. A large in this is 52, a medium is 48. And y'all know from my Susu, it was ginormous and I knit a large, so I am knitting a medium in this. So that's 10 inches positive ease, okay? Are you following me on this maths? I've even had martinis, so if the maths are wrong, I apologize, but I'm pretty sure this is right. I am knitting a medium, which is 10 inches positive ease for me. However, my swatch, which is a small swatch, if you ask swatchers, like legit swatchers, these are small swatches. You want a larger swatch with some more weight, okay? On the size sixes, I like the way this fabric is. Like I like the way it drapes, I like the way it lays. And I was getting 21 to 22 stitches an inch when the pattern called for 20 stitches, not an inch, per four inches. When the pattern gauge was 20 stitches per four inches. The reason that I went ahead, even though I didn't get gauge, the reason that I went ahead and did a medium is because my friend Lindsay, yes, Lindsay, I'm gonna blame you if this sweater doesn't fit. <laughs> my friend Lindsay has knit with Mineville quite a bit and she says it grow, grow, grows. So I think I'm gonna be safe. We'll see together. You know I'll tell you. So currently, my gauge is a little off. I'm knitting a size smaller than I normally knit, but it's because I feel like when I knit the size I think I need, which is usually large, it's always ginormous. So I'm gonna go with a medium. I'm hoping to wear this over my dresses. Yes, the hinterland is still in the cards. I just haven't made it that far because I've been soldering. But the hinterland is happening. I'm hoping to wear this sweater over that. If for some reason it's smaller, I'll go up to the large when I'll know what needle size to use. I'll go up to the large 
when I do the color work. It'll be fine. I'll still wear this even though it's a medium, like under a tank top and some jeans, whatever. We'll see. We're in it together. It's like a journey. It's like a choose your own adventure. And I am choosing size six with an incorrect gauge and a size medium. <laughs> so we'll see. This is what I have so far. <laughs> it doesn't look like much. Uh, Amy Beth just talked about this too. And I don't remember exactly what she said, but I will tell you, okay, top down. So it's like this. You don't join in the round. It's a V-neck. Let me see. Is there even a good picture of it? No, there isn't a good picture of it. That's the best picture you get. You start top down, but it's knit flat. And then eventually you knit in the round. So I still have a few more raglan increases before I join in the round. On the raglan increases, look how cool this is. It's a cable. It's a cable raglan increase. One of the things that Amy Beth did as far as a mod is, and I don't know, I, I never know how much I can say about a pattern before I'm giving away the secret sauce. So when I'm at work and I'm watching podcasts, I sort of half listen. I apologize, Amy Beth. But I do remember you saying something about the knitting front and backs and you modified it. I'm thinking that... When I knit this again, the color work one, because I don't know if you can see it, but see how there's, you can't really see it. I feel like there's bigger holes on this side than there is on this side of the raglan increase. I feel like if I knit it again, I would do like make one lefts, make one rights, or uh, what's that other one? K, uh, K, K L L. Yeah, I, I would choose a different increase, I think, on either side of the cable. But I'm trusting the pattern designer. This is just fine as well. I'm, I'm rolling with it. I'm knitting the pattern as written, except for the color work. I'm leaving the color work out. I am loving it so far. I love this yarn. There are a few things I'm excited about. First, I'm using my kitty markers. Do you see those kitty stitch markers? Look at them, hold on. Aren't they cute? They're little kitties, do you guys remember them? Creating with sticks, I think, is her. Uh, hold on, let me, let me look at my notes, because now I don't remember. Yes, creating with sticks. There isn't anything in her shop right now, but I mean, you guys, I think she hand makes all these. Because I messaged her about the, I've talked about these on the podcast before. I showed you when I got them. The other thing I'm excited about when I join in the round, I am going to put all of these in my ball sacks. Because you know I got ball sacks for days. Maybe not for days. But I have enough ball sacks that I can put all the yarn in the ball sacks, right? And I'm going to try Helix Knitting. I'm really excited about it. Helix Knitting, I'll link a video. I think the Very Pink Knits is the video that I watched and she does it for striping um, so that you have jogless stripes if you're knitting in the round. But the nice thing about Helix Knitting in this instance is you do it instead of alternating skeins. So you have a little yarn maintenance, hence my ball sacks because I feel like if you were knitting with ball sacks, if you were Helix knitting with ball sacks, it would be easier to manage than if you just had balls of yarn. So I plan on putting all of my skeins in the ball sacks, Helix knitting, and what that is, if I can explain this, I probably won't be able to explain it. Okay, so you have a circle, right? So you have a ball here, a ball here, and a ball here. You knit with one, pick up this one. Knit with one, pick up that one. So it's sort of like the yarn's chasing itself around the spiral. So you don't have to, you're kind of like 
alternating the skeins as you go. I don't know. I'm talking with my hands. I don't know if that makes any sense to you. Go check out the video. I know other podcasters have talked about it. This is the first project that I've done that I've actually been able to try it myself. I've wanted to try it for a while. I'm really excited about it. So hopefully the next time you see this project, I will be in the midst, midst, midst of Helix Knitting. I do want to shout out my Nordiska is currently being housed whoops, in my kitchen counter crafter bag that has beer on it. I don't remember if I've ever shown this on the podcast to see all the beers. Let me see. She has this cool handle. Here's her tag. She is also known as Java Jenny, so you may know her as that. Uh, there also was not anything in her store. I checked when I did the show notes. So she might be on like hiatus, on break. I purchased this bag many moons ago at YarnCon. And the cool thing about it, do you remember those slap bracelets? That's how it opens. I don't know if I've ever shown this bag or not. So I think that this is old yardsticks. It's like those old slap bracelets. A couple mentions. Don't forget about the make-alongs. I already mentioned the book make-along. That will be linked below. If y'all are knitting out of a book or a magazine or some sort of printed not Ravelry pattern, you're welcome to enter that. It ends on September 23rd, which is the last day of summer. Another giveaway we're having is the hashtag Corrado is awesome giveaway that is in conjunction with the hashtag quiet queers craft along that knit boop started you can double dip there if you are knitting a corrado pattern for the quiet queers craft along go ahead and either hashtag it corrado is awesome or go and put it on ravelry and i will be drawing for that prize on august 16th the quiet queers craft along ends on August 15th, so I just figured that I would draw for that at the same time. Go check out his patterns. It does not have to be an FO. You just have to have it cast on and put a picture either in the Ravelry group or hashtag Corrado is awesome, and you will be entered to win one of his eBooks. I wanted to mention a couple of new to me podcasts. They're not new, but they're new to me. When Harry Met Ani podcast, that is Emily from Hershey, Pennsylvania. She is a new-ish podcast. She's on episode 14. So if you're one of those that like to watch from the beginning, she would be a good one to binge if you're looking for a newbie. Uh, Harry and Ani, which is Harry and Onyx, are her cats. So when Harry Met Ani is a play on when Harry met Sally. So go check her out, she's a lot of fun. I actually watched her and she shouted me out. And I was like, what? I was not expecting that at all. Her last episode that I watched, Harry was on. He's like a big cat. I love big cat. He's not fat, he's just big. Like I feel like his head was really big. I wanted to squish his face. So I haven't met Onyx yet because I've only watched the one episode and Harry was on it but Onyx was not. So go check her out. Another new to me podcast is, I'm gonna mess this up. I love, I love Loopy Crochet and Treasures. Her name's Tracy. That is for you crocheters. Let me tell ya, she crocheted, she, at, she's crocheted, first off she's an animal lover and you know anybody who loves animals, you gotta love animals. If you don't love animals, I, I'll just be honest, I might lose some subscribers over this, but I, I don't know if I trust you. Like, how can you not love animals? Anyway, uh, Tracy loves animals, so, you know, be BFFs right there. And then she knit these shawl, or excuse me, crocheted these shawls. There was one shawl called the Beachy Keen shawl that I'll, I'll put here, like this is the Beachy Keen shawl on Ravelry. I'll be totally honest with you. It's it's by Nez, Nestasia? Nesta, it looks like Natasha, 
but it's N-A-Z-T-A-Z-I-A, Nastasia. No disrespect, but if I saw it on Ravelry, I probably would not choose to crochet it. Looking at Tracy's, watching her take it off the mannequin and seeing like all the tassels and stuff, hardcore Stevie Nicks vibes. I wanted it. I might be crocheting that in the future, just saying. Like I really liked it. So go check her out if you're looking for something new. The last thing I'm going to mention is my best friend Clinty's little sister who I showed you the easy peasy newborn sock cat, is that what it's called? And the Knubbleton doll that I knit for her baby. Christy had her baby. His name is Nolan Robert and he's adorable. I have a picture here. Isn't he cute? I also knit the Simply Sleeper. No, not the Sweetest Sleeper by Simply Sycamore. That's it. And I knit that for Clint from Clint. Like, like for Nolan, but it was from Clint. Clint bought the yarn at YarnCon. He picked it out. He picked out the pattern and that was his gift to Nolan as his new baby gift. That was super awesome. That's happened since the last time I've got it, since the last time I have seen you guys. And that is it. I'm going to go eat some dinner. I feel like this is a very long podcast. Let's see if I can cut out some stuff. I know I held a conversation with Dan and whatnot. I hope you guys have had a better week than me. Wish me luck with my dental bullshit. And my new thing, be nice. I feel like there's so many nasty, shitty people in the world that everybody should like smile and just be nice. So hashtag be nice. It's the new thing, yo. Like, thumbs up, subscribe, all that happy horse shit, and be nice until we meet again later.